This short video will cover the steps for running the plugin from QuickBooks Desktop to Tax 1099 to import your 1099 miscellaneous forms. A couple of points about this video. In this situation, the plugin has already been installed. Uh, we do have a separate video that covers how to install the plugin if you need to see that. You can always run the 1099 wizard in QuickBooks Desktop to confirm your vendor information and that the chart of accounts mapping has already been set, making sure that you have the dollar figures going to the right box. And then you can also run the 1099 summary and 1099 detail reports in QuickBooks Desktop to reference as what should import in the tax 1099. So you have that, uh, that available as well. I'm gonna start my process over in QuickBooks. I'm already opened into a company file. And as I mentioned, I have already installed the plugin, which I can tell by looking at the vendor menu and seeing the tax 1099.com e-file option there. I'm gonna go there in just a moment, but I wanted to show a couple of other things here. Um, under the print and e-file 1099s, that's where the 1099 wizard is. If I click that open for just a moment, it will take you through a few steps to make sure that you have your vendors selected. Uh, these would be all the vendors who are entitled or eligible to receive a 1099 miscellaneous form based on the checkbox being selected for 1099 eligibility. I'm gonna continue and you can verify some information on the vendors. You can see where their names are, if you have a tax ID for them and so forth. This is the mapping of the accounts. This is important so that I know what dollar figures are going to box seven, what dollar figures are going to box one and so forth. And I know which of my categories have been, um, have been omitted, which, are, which ones will not be reported to tax 1099. I have an option to report all payments in box seven. And you can see this red message down here, your settings do not match the current IRS thresholds. So I can show that and then I can reset to the IRS thresholds. And you can see how that changed there. When I save and close, that red message has gone away. When I continue, I can see uh, the payment. I can see the included payments or the excluded payments. Um, I could confirm the entries. And then finally, uh, I can choose my filing method. If you click to go to 1099 eFile service, it takes you to a landing page that takes you to tax 1099. I've already done that and set up my account, so I'm not going to go through that particular part of the process. The other two items here are my 1099 summary report and my 1099 detail report. I am in a sample company, so give me just a moment and I'm gonna change the effective dates of these reports so that I can see the actual information for 2018. And I'm gonna make that report a little bit larger. Uh, so you can see in my case, I have three different uh, vendors, Bayshore Water, Connor Garden Supply, and Salt Advertising. And I can see where their dollar figures are coming. I've got one in box one, and I have two in box seven that I should be reporting over. Uh, same thing for the detail report. You could get a little bit more detail into, um, into that uh, report by running the 1099 detail report, which is also found here under print and e-file 1099s. I'm going to go ahead and run through the process. It's pretty quick uh, because I have everything set up correctly in QuickBooks. Uh, so it doesn't take very long for the process to run. Plus, I'm using a very small company file in this scenario. I'm just going to enter my tax 1099 login credentials there. I'm going to choose the export year of 2018 uh, and I'm going to click the login button and that will initiate the plugin process. I'm going to get a pop-up window that's going to go through my vendors. I'm going to pull that back up for just a moment so you can see um, it's looking at 10 different vendors. Uh, so I have 10 1099 eligible vendors and it found three that it wants to report over to tax 1099. These are the ones who met the threshold, who have dollar figures in those mappable accounts. And you can see those all here. I can see the two that I have for box seven, $7,500 7 and $8,900. And I can see the one that I have for box one for rents. I can see everything has a green dot next to it. My company, as well as my vendors, are all uh, showing with a green dot. That means my data is good. There's the possibility that you may be missing something or have some invalid data, like a four-digit um, zip code or an eight-digit tax credit identification number. If so, you'll see a red dot, and you'll be able to click in here and update the information. If you do update the information here in text to 99, it does not report back to QuickBooks Desktop, so you will still need to go back to QuickBooks Desktop and make those changes there.
since I have everything green here, I'm good to go. Uh, I can edit or delete. I can do a number of different things here if I need to, but everything matches up to my reporting. And if I just flip back real quickly to QuickBooks S, you can see my $17,200 total amount there. That's the same amount that I have here in my summary report in QuickBooks Desktop. So easy enough to cross-reference and check that uh, dollar figure. When I click Next, I'm going to import these three forms. And then I'll be on the checkout screen here for Tax 99. I'm going to click OK. And you can see the three forms here. From this point, you're able to do all of the items you may need to do. Uh, you can choose mailing. You can email these to the recipients if they will accept an electronically filed copy. We can offer a TIM match. If you have states that require direct filing, such as Pennsylvania or Oregon, they will show up here. We're pulling that from the recipient's address in QuickBooks Desktop. And then we're supplying the dollar figure. So that would be $7,500 being reported to the state of Pennsylvania. If you have withholdings, you will need to go in and edit that form so you can show the withholdings. And if you have a state ID, a state withholding ID, you'd want to enter that there as well by clicking the edit option here and diving in and editing that specific form for that recipient to change the option for, um, for e-filing and to include the state ID. You could also schedule these to uh, the final date. We're showing January 10th date because that's the first day the IRS will actually begin accepting e-files, but you can schedule it as late as January 31st for your box seven amounts. Uh, so I can schedule the January 31st date for my box seven amounts, and then I can schedule as late as March 31st for my other box amounts. So I'm going to set that to March 31st. Uh, in fact, March 31st is on a Sunday next year, and so I could actually do that to April 1st. So I'm gonna put it to March 31st, and you can see those are already scheduled for me here. And then simply checking the boxes and moving to the next page to check out and pay would complete the process for you. So just a quick run through of doing the plugin, running through that information, pulling the data over from text, uh, excuse me, from QuickBooks Desktop into Text 1099.